Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My notes on God's goodness. Take one. On God's goodness, uh, 2nd of January 2024. There are two types of will in God the providential will and the prescriptive will. One, God with regards to what He creates transcends good and evil. This is His providential will. God with regards to what he commands or endorse is good and not bad or evil. This is with regards to his prescriptive will. The providential will covers all. Prescriptive will excludes. It doesn't cover all. Providential will covers the existence of the good and the bad or the evil. All the good and bad event and evil events are covered by the providential will. Prescriptive will, however, is a judgment. Prescriptive will judges, endorses the good event and excludes or does not endorse the bad or evil events. Here comes my divine commentary plus coherentism argument. God is good and not evil because we believe that God is just. He does not punish the good and he does not reward the evil. Rather, he judges all with justice. That's why he is good. God is transcendent with regards what he creates. And he is good or just with regards to what he endorses in his creation. Without, without divine commentary plus coherentism, coherentism meaning the law of non-contradiction, we cannot call God good in any sense. He would just be transcendent, but with coherentism, God can be transcendent yet be good. This method is a way of defending the idea of eternal punishment even. And yet God is good. Because the persons being punished wouldn't be good or innocent. They would be bad or uh, evil people. There is no injustice. Here is a quote. There is no injustice in punishing the evil doer. There is no justice in punishing the good. End quote. The prescriptive will is a judgment. While the providential will is not a judgment. That's why we cannot judge the providential will. Now, since it seems to be the, uh, the case that we ascribe judgment of either being good or being evil to subjects due to whether they are just or unjust. Since we believe God is just, giving coherentism, then God cannot be judged as evil. He is good by definition and can therefore be worshipped and praised. Take the following examples in order to like flesh it out more to think about this issue. God created the event of an act of oppression, or oppression given his providential will. Remember, the providential will covers all of creation, whether good or evil, whereas the prescriptive will selects and endorses some part of it and excludes the others, the evil part. So, God created the event of an act of oppression given his providential will. Let's say, a rapist kidnapping and raping a young innocent virgin woman he did this for 10 years. <laughs> Bro, what kind of example is this? But anyway, let's, let's run with it. Let's say a rapist kidnapping and raping a young innocent woman for like 10 years, bro. Now, these are uh, some concepts of God. We have like examples of the kind of God and then we will see which one we accept and which one we reject. Okay? So God, God A, God A does not endorse this act. He condemns it. He then punishes the rapist and rewards the victim and compensates her in the year after. Or even in this life. God B, this is the second type of God, concept of God. God B endorses the act, the act of rape and all those evil stuff. God B endorses that act. He then rewards the rapist and punishes the victim, the, the woman that was raped. He punishes the one down one. Okay. That's so just hold on a bit. That's the second type. The third type, God C doesn't he doesn't endorse nor condemn this act. He then punishes the rapist. However, he punishes the rapist and rewards the victim and compensates her in the hereafter. God D doesn't endorse nor condemn this act. He then rewards the rapist and punishes the victim. Okay, so this is God D. Then we have God E. God E doesn't endorse nor condemn this act. He doesn't reward nor punish anyone. That's the last time. Now, here's a, a few commentary about these different types of gods that we have ex uh, uh, explained here. You can go back to like listen to who they, who they are and what, did, what is their position. So now, this is our commentary. Number one, God A will be judged by us as good. He is the creator of all events, given his providential will. 
He condemns or disavows injustice or evil and rewards the good, the wronged. Okay? He rewards the, the victim. He is worthy of our worship and praise and can properly be called a good God without introducing a duality to create the evil part of the event. Okay? If you understand what I just said here, it addresses the issue of who is creating the good and uh, who is creating the evil. Since God is providential, remember we made that distinction between the providential will and the prescriptive will. We, don't, we didn't introduce a duality like other people. Anyway, that's God one. Let me read it again. God number one. God A will be judged by us as good. He is the creator of all events and he condemns or disavow injustice or evil and he rewards the good, the wronged. He is worthy of our praise and worship and can properly be called a good God without introducing a duality to create the evil part of the event. Number two, God B will be judged by us as evil, not because he created both the good and the evil part of the event, but because he has endorsed evil and condemned the good. Not only that, he then proceeded to enact punishment on the, on the victim and reward the, the evildoer. This God cannot be, uh, can still be called a God, okay, albeit not a good one, not a good God cannot be worshipped or praised by good people, maybe by the criminals who stand to benefit from such an evil God. Okay, that's the second one. Number three, God C. God C will be judged by us as good, even though he doesn't endorse the act, nor condemn it, he will be judged by us as good because from our own point of view, he has been, uh, what's it called? He has been just. The evil got punished and the good, innocent people got rewarded and compensated. Therefore, it can be worshipped. Therefore, it can be called a good God. Now, we have number four. God D. God D will be judged by us as evil. Even though he doesn't endorse the act, nor condemn it, he will be judged by us as evil because from our own point of view, he has been unjust. The evil got rewarded and the good or innocent got punished. Therefore, cannot be worshipped by good people, maybe by the criminals who stand to benefit. That's God D. God E, number five, God E. God E will be judged by us as indifferent cannot be watched by anybody, for he benefits no one. He seems to be neither good nor evil. He is just he is just a creator God. But I think from our own point of view, we can still judge him as evil because we have a moral compass and feel that an injustice happened and no justice was, uh, was served to reconcile it, not worthy of our praise or worship. So we cannot call this God e good or evil in, his, in a real sense, but from our own point of view, we can actually do that because no justice was served. This, remember, God is indifferent. Okay, Now, continuing on, away from the commentary now, I think from this, we can derive what our criteria for a good God is. A God, a good God will be a God that establishes justice. A God that doesn't condemn or punish the good, the innocent, the victim. Okay? If a God doesn't punish the good, the innocent, the victim, and he establishes justice by punishing the evil, if any concept of God violates this principle, such a God will be considered as evil. Okay, as simple as that. How are we able to make this judgment on God, you might ask. We are not judging God in the sense of standing in a position of authority and judging God as, as a, and judging like a subject, like we are like over God judging him. Rather, this judgment is a judgment of recognition, a judgment of discerning what type of God we worship or praise. Like a person judging to recognize the face of his mother, it cannot be contradictory. This is why we uphold coherentism, the law of non-contradiction, in order to stabilize our understanding. Without this, we wouldn't know what type of God we worship, good, evil, or indifferent. Therefore, we propose fitra plus uh, coherentism. Simple. We are able to do this because we believe God has built in us a universal shared faculty to be able to make this judgment. And it aligns with what God's prescriptive will is. Remember, providential will, prescriptive will. It's this judgment that God has built in us, which we call fitra, okay? It aligns with God's prescriptive will. We have to make that epistemological jump, okay? So, when we judge rape or murder as evil, God judges them as evil as well. He built us in a way to be able to make that judgment, and it doesn't contradict that. Without this alignment or agreement be between God's prescriptive will and our honest, true judgment, we lose the identity of who God is, like a child who doesn't recognize the face of his mother and can therefore not recognize her, and could even mistake her for someone else. Furthermore, let's bring back God, the concept of God, God A and God C. Remember, these are the only two concepts of God uh, that we accepted in our commentary as good. However, there is an issue. Which one is actually the most accurate description of God we worship? 
even though both can justifiably be, be worshipped for they are just and they establish justice, the only difference between the two is that one is said to have not endorsed nor condemned the act, which seems indifferent, okay? But it still establishes justice anyway. So the only thing missing here, uh, here is the prescriptive will. It seems to be that the prescriptive will gets pushed into the reward and punishment part, which is actually sufficient for justice. That is, it isn't contradictory, which, would, which could actually make God A and God C almost the same in a way. Now let's, let's flesh it out more, what the real issue is. Imagine an author writing a book with a contradictory story. Imagine an author writing a book with a non-contradictory story. Someone might ask, does the story have to be consistent with the values of the author or they just need to be consistent with the values within the story itself? My position is this. The values in the story need not be the same as the values of the author unless the author is writing a story about himself or writing a story about his kind. They need not have the same values as long as the story is not contradictory. It's fine. Okay? Given that our values, human values, are anthropocentric, which would, why would we expect God to share those values since he is not a man? I have a quote here. We don't need God to be man or share our values. What we need is for God to establish justice. An author writing a book with a contradictory story uh, would be like a book in which the values within the story are violated and contradicted. An author writing a book with a non-contradictory story would be like a book in which the values within the story are not violated, not contradicted. They are maintained consistently. No one will worship or praise a God that can contradict himself or that contradicts himself. A God that can be just and unjust. You cannot worship him for any reason because whatever reason you have, he could violate it. You can, you can only worship such a God in ignorance. Imagine you are informed about a God that commands being good and staying away from evil. But it tells you up front that in the end, it will punish the, uh, those who obey this command and reward those who disobey. No one will worship such a God. Wouldn't this make people even flock to doing evil? No. This is like, it's, it's ridiculous, right? Notice, however, that the concept of God can be consistently good and therefore such a God can be called a good God. But it, but it can also be consistently evil and therefore be called an evil God. What cannot happen is, for instance, an evil God demanding to be judged as good. You cannot be good and evil. You are either good or evil. The end. Let me see what you guys think in the comment section. See you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.